I use an older pair of speakers that I used to listen to music almost 20 years ago. And here's a lot of mistakes people buy. I'm going to go out and buy $1,600 speakers, two pairs thinking I'm going to record the best music out on the world. It's going to sound great. But the problem is, those they sound great. Your music sounds great on $1,600 speakers. But majority of people's music does sound great on a pair of $1,600 speakers. That's the way it is. So you got to imagine the average listener does not have $1,600 speakers. So try to use the speakers that you normally use. You know, whether they're, they're the, car, uh, the bedroom speakers that you have, pull them out, the left and the right. Utilize them as well because you want to make sure if we're going into our next step that your music travels well. So you have those speakers and then have your expensive or your, your good speakers that you use to monitor. And you want to make sure they are flat response. No too low, not too low, and not too high. You want to make sure that these, so you can listen to all the levels of the volume of your music. So you can pick out the mid range, so you can pick out the treble, so you can pick out the bass. Now the rule of thumb. Say you are mixing hip hop. Switch around. Okay, you're probably going to deal with a lot of bass in hip hop, I would say invest in a good pair of subwoofers. That way, make sure you check when you first pull your mixer up because you're probably going to do your drums first. You're on a flat response, then you go to your bass, and then you don't want the bass to surpass the drums, okay? So on your flats, you have the volume checked. All right, now you can switch over to your subs and see how that bass works. If you need a little sub tuning there, and that's a good thing with the subwoofers. All right, and it's the same rule of thumb if you get into 5.1 surround. As you know, stereo is two speakers, and 5.1 comes to five speakers, the rear, the front, the center, and the sub. Okay, so that comes to 5.1 speakers. So you'll need that many speakers. And again, keep it at two sets. You know, if you're budget recording, you want the one set that's going to sound like the home theater and the one set that's going to be a flat sound because you're going to mix that 5.1 and you want to make it right. So, yeah, there's different genre of music. So here's another thing. As you're recording, you're going to have different genre comes into your house. Say you're going to have hip-hop. If you're going to have hip-hop, listen a couple hours of hip-hop at the levels you want to listen to, which is 79 and 80 decibels. So you put your hip-hop music in. You listen to it. Or you got a country artist coming in. Listen to the country music because you want to listen. So you test out through listening to other music before they come in. Get that, get that get those levels all checked, get up a couple hours before your your uh, your um, people come in, your client, whoever. Okay, so that is a rule of thumb to think about with speakers. All right, then I, uh, I guess I'll go on further with your listening, but make sure your music travels well, and I think I'm being redundant here. Once you're done recording, uh, take that CD wherever, you know, burn it, uh, a lot of some people close the door to the studios and try to listen to the music there to see what they hear. Uh, they walk a little bit farther out. They t then they take that. Uh, every time I record one song, a lot of times, because CDs run me about four cents a piece, I'll go ahead and burn that song on a CD and run around through every system in the house, make sure it sounds really good. I have two 5.1 sound systems, one downstairs and one upstairs. I'll check the one downstairs, I'll put the one upstairs, I'll put it on my iPod, I'll put it in my car, make sure it sounds really well. So make sure your music travels sounds well before you start uploading it. That's another rule of thumb. So you, you'll learn, you'll figure out, well, if people are car listeners or if they're iPod listeners or whatever, you want to check every form of way of people are listening to music. And the worst thing nowadays, too, even when you upload it in YouTube, where the most sometimes it seems like the the 
it's so trebly or it's too high frequency and it sounds awful you need to think about that now people because if if your music doesn't sound attractive they're not probably going to buy it simple as that okay um,